I, I would prefer to get that one person who is the master of that one particular trade as compared to hiring somebody who's good at everything but at the same time will not be able to Hey, welcome to the show, Kaushal. Hey, uh, thank you, Saikat. Thank you for inviting me uh, to this particular podcast. Uh, really happy to connect online and uh, share some insights. Right. Let's dive straight in, Kaushal. If I am a rookie startup founder looking to start my own micro SaaS business and I don't have a single penny in my pocket to invest in marketing, what are the first couple of steps I can implement to go about weighing my options in terms of implementing growth strategies? What are the steps I should consider at the beginning? Perfect, Saikat. And uh, this is very close to my heart because this has been my story as well, Saikat. Uh, while I was working at Mintra, I realized this particular thing that, hey, I want to start something on my own. And uh, But yeah, the challenge was uh, not enough uh, deep pockets that uh, could sponsor that kind of uh, dream which I had. The other alternative was VCs and other stuff. But yes, that's a different ball game. When uh, you mastered that particular thing, it looks really easy. But uh, for all the founders, Founders who have been raising funding, it's it's uh, something really good thing which they are doing. Uh, they've mastered that particular skill. But yes, if you want to go slow, not spend much money in the initial stage, the ideal way would be what I actually implemented was at least I got into the services area first. Uh, when I got into the services space, one thing which happened is uh, it helped me generate some revenue, and uh, then at least I initiated the product related developments after a few years. Uh, th- that's how at least I did it. But yes, uh, I, I'm not sure how many people would be as patient as I am. Uh, But yes, if you want to do something really quickly and uh, you have this particular challenge, at least what I would say is don't wait for a few years. But whatever thing which you're planning to launch, right, this as product, maybe a part of it, whatever you could implement and help the users on, try to implement that as a service initially, understand the market based on this aspect because the advantage of a services business is you're really able to work closely with the clients. And that's where uh, whatever mistakes or uh, clarity that you need from them can easily be achieved at that point in time, along with some revenue, at least with the services business will get you. And then as soon as you start uh, generating some revenue, uh, move on to the product side and start investing on the business side. At least I believe that the VCs would also like this because they know that, okay, this particular model has been tried and tested with a small base, although in a different format, but at least they know that, okay, something like this has a demand, something like this has a potential. So that's what at least I would suggest that when entrepreneurs want to get into business, but don't have that kind of deep pockets or money to invest, they want to go really slow, uh, they could try this particular approach. So let's say different products would behave in a very different manner, right? Uh, and uh, uh, now some of the businesses, now let, let, let's take an example of a sales process, right? A sales process is a complicated process. And for many organizations, what happens is uh, when they are uh, driving the sales, they're working with large teams. Now, to manage these large teams, in most cases, what they do is they work on Excels and uh, try to at least attribute that, hey, this part of the revenue came from which particular salesperson, right? That, that's a common thing. Imagine the sales team of some banks. Let, let's take an example of ICICI Bank. Uh, their sales team would be in thousands of people, at least. I don't know the exact number, but uh, at right. least thousands of people. And if they're managing something like this on an Excel sheet, understand what kind of challenge it is. Now, definitely, there is a product possibility over here. You could build a product which automates a part of the work and moves this humongous task of uh, attributing that, hey, which sales should be attributed to which salesperson, how much commission to be paid, how much recurring revenue is he doing, how much uh, things are getting repeated because of this particular thing, etc. You can manage this on Excel. You could do it also on a product. If I'm thinking that I want to get into a business like this, my first thought would be, that okay where do i get the revenue those the vcs uh, vcs may support uh, if uh, we were in 2018 2019 kind of situation immediately if you jump give them some such a kind of idea but yes we are in 2023 uh, vcs themselves are very kind of uh, cautious before investing in something like this at right. this point in time let's say instead of creating that full-fledged product i create an excel sheet also mm. right and I say that, okay, for some time, what I'll do is I'll, I'll make this Excel sheet. And based on that, at least uh, I'll help you with the required information. 
uh, let's see if this thing works. I'm not going to give them the Excel sheet, but at least help them with that information in some manner, maybe on emails or some automated reporting via Looker Studio or something. So a service, uh, service-led MVP version of the product is what you're referring to. Yes. Yeah. So, so something like this can be done, right? So if, if a person starts thinking in that manner, uh, that's one way to be a little thrifty. And at the same time, create that kind of growth and not just stop that, okay, I don't have funds, so let me not pursue entrepreneurship. So let's just say the person is able to achieve product market fit with this service-led MVP, right? But he still doesn't have enough money to blow on Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, mm-hmm. you know, or, or performance. Are there thrifty ways of growing your product? Uh, what, what, what are these sorts of ninja techniques that this person can still implement? to Mm -hmm. try and grow their product from, let's say, 1 to 10 until he's able to afford enough money to then flush back into his business to grow it from 10 to 20 or 100. Understood. Uh, Really good question, Saikat. And this is the challenge which many startups and businesses are facing today that, okay, the product is done. At least they have a technical co-founder and at least the technical part is taken care of. The product is taken care of. Now, what about the marketing budgets? Because that's sometimes white elephant when it comes that okay you have to invest on facebook or google ads or any any other paid marketing that becomes uh, a really expensive deal in yeah. such situation uh, what i would uh, prefer is at least uh, brands can go organic both in terms of uh, organic social and organic search content ideation and content writing comes in first where at least your seo strategy could be created or search engine optimization strategy could be created in such a manner that you can start getting those visitors to your website without investing much in facebook ads or google ads etc and and that's something which at least is very close to my heart considering uh, the work which i have been doing in this particular space since the last uh, two decades so that's something which i feel that organic search is one such channel which can help such entrepreneurs at this kind of stage and that can help them get that initial audience on their website get that initial business which could then be taken up uh, at a later stage once they start getting the revenue maybe they'll get some revenue even to spend on facebook or google ads but in such cases i would suggest that okay go ahead with search engine optimization do you sort of subscribe to that notion that you know things come later not really see always money is not an answer because for having that kind of money that itself is the question right so let's say even if i feel that hey i i need uh, to spend money and that's the only way out but if that blocks my growth itself I, because i don't have that much money in my pocket right now how is that a solution so in such cases at least while organic search uh steps in and organic search while you mentioned it blunt uh, I, I can share you some case studies also let's let's say, speak of this particular brand called pisato right uh, so This is a brand which has not raised funds till date. Now, when they approached us a few years back, uh, their challenge was that, hey, uh, we don't have enough money and uh, we want to pursue this sort of thing. How do we go ahead with it? And that's the same solution which I mentioned right now. I suggested them that, okay, at least start with organic search and uh, see how this thing works in in a situation. Because they tried Mm -hmm. a little bit with paid advertising, invested, let's say, around 20, 30,000 at that point in time on paid advertising uh, for a particular period, uh, lesser than a month, uh, gave 20,000 or so to the SEM guy who was going to Mm -hmm. do the work or the freelancer was going to do the work for them. But at the end, uh, what happened is some visits came on their website and uh, nothing, no transactions happened. So in fact, the ROI was completely negative. It was initial stage of the business. So I understand that hey, it's too early to measure the ROIs. Uh, ROIs will have to be measured later. Uh, mm. But yes, no VC backing. So then how much money is the founder himself who is at an early stage in his life going to pump into the business? Right. So th- that becomes a real challenge. Over the years, Pisato's organic traffic became really good, specifically on the painting related keywords. We started seeing that, okay, for keywords like canvas painting, uh, mm. Radhe Krishna paintings, etc. This particular website at that point in time started ranking even higher uh, th- than many other websites, right? It was in fact ranking at number one for a long period. That started happening. People started visiting the website. And then, yes, it's, it's a product challenge which will have to be taken up after that, that the product should have that kind of power to hold back those customers and make the customers transact because that's a challenge of CRO. But at least... Top of the funnel challenge of getting the visitors on the website was solved with SEO in a span of somewhat around nine months. But yes, uh, that at least uh, ensured that they were getting sessions at a cost of maybe a two, three rupee kind of thing as compared to the thousand. Right. So what is the right time to start investing in SEO? Because I think there's also this is also a very controversial topic. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of founders would say if you don't have uh, product market fit yet, 
don't yeah. invest in seo uh, yes. a lot of people would say you know they are seo sort of loyalists they'd say you know day one you should start investing in seo what no. according to you is the right time to start investing in seo i mean time and effort saikat so i'll back to differ uh, i'm an seo loyalist but i would suggest mm. uh, that hey uh, the approach which the first team suggested that's the right approach first the product market fit comes in right so even uh, when founders approach me i don't tell them that start seo right on day 1 of their product right. launch the product market fit can easily be tested with the help of uh, paid marketing right I- i'm not saying do those campaigns for years and years and then at least move on to seo but at least the initial product market fit can easily be done with the help of paid marketing now I- i'll i'll just uh, compare this with a person who has moved to a new city uh, just completed his or her graduation and the initial thing which this person is going to do is stay on rent in that city right they they are not going to buy the home on day one so that's how similarly paid campaign has to be done initially you move to that particular channel see how it is performing or how that city in the case of the real estate example uh, see how that particular city is working out see how that new job is working out for you after a period after a few years when you know that hey i'm comfortable with this city i'm comfortable with uh, this particular job or i can find enough number of jobs in this particular city the person will try to settle down in that city and then maybe invest in his own home similarly once your product market fit has been taken care of you know that hey this is something which is working wonders with paid ads at least i know that okay i'm able to get some visitors and based on the visitors are also converting so i know that okay the product market fit is taken care of that's the time i'll say that okay now it's the right time to invest in search engine optimization because seo is also going to take a little while but yes during those particular days uh, both paid marketing and seo will have to go hand in hand as a digital marketer i would always suggest uh, that okay you should have all the channels uh, whichever are generating good roi in your bucket it should not be that uh, i'll just do seo i'll not do paid or i'll just do paid i'll not do seo a mature digital marketer would always ensure that he has all the channels at least which are giving good roi in his bucket or in his strategy right so what what are the most cost effective channels according to you generally what are the which ones deliver your top 5 most cost effective marketing channels what would those be if you have not found product market fit let's start with that first if you have not found the product market fit yes okay uh, so then you should not uh, go for many i i would say uh, first uh, understand your product understand if the product is more uh, suitable for the audience which is on google or is the product more suitable for people who are on instagram or facebook some products are driven by visuals some products are driven by demand give an example let's say if i am uh, trying to sell a form of art right uh, and that particular art itself uh, is going to create that pull i may first try out a visual channel uh, which will be in this case facebook or an instagram where True. people see that particular art and then they are going to get pulled in that direction maybe that True. could be the first thing but let's say this is something which is be pulled based on a demand that hey i want to buy let's say a chair I right. want to buy a bag. Uh, in in that case, the search volumes are good enough for you to direct jump onto Google. Got it. Now, at both the places, organic social is uh, or organic is, uh, search is going to take a little while. Product market fit is not there as of now. That's what the question is, yeah. right? So in that case, at least now you have identified that which particular channel is going to work for me. So instead of giving top five, I would say just top one. If the product is visual in nature, mm-hmm. go for Instagram or Facebook. And if it is demand driven, uh, like the bags and other stuff, go for Google search, paid marketing, and at least rank over there on the top for some time with the help of paid, and see if uh, that's giving you enough uh, uh, number of users who are going to start transacting. Right. So at least once you gain that product market fit, then you can try other channels like emails and other stuff, which are also good channels. Uh, but yes, at least uh, instead of doing email on day one, uh, you are going to bombard so many emails. Uh, you are going to spam so many people, um, and I have not seen enough returns. Uh, on emails in terms mm. of a good roi i would say at least uh, emails work wonderfully at a particular stage of business but we we are looking at the initial stage of the business where sometimes it does not uh, at least for me it has not worked that particular even so i would not suggest email on day one but yes email also could be used at a later part of the business from there on after pmf what's the best step according okay. to you so for me uh, uh, th- that particular challenge at least so the product market fit is now taken care of the business mm. is uh, doing good at least and now they start thinking about the return on investment what the channel right is. right 
is where we are right now. Now, when the business starts uh, seeing that, the first thing which a digital marketer or head of digital, whoever is taking care of this particular responsibility needs to take care of is that, hey, what is the return on investment which I'm getting from each of the channels which I'm using right now? In most cases where the SEO strategy is properly implemented, uh, I see that SEO is on the top of the list. It is giving the best of the return, best return on investments. Uh, many times it is followed. I'll not use direct in this particular example because direct is in, again, uh, over the years, how much brand value which they have gained. So, so that's where direct is and that's where I'm not taking direct and keeping it aside. But after that, let's say many times it's easy emails which steps in and emails also are said that okay uh, once your brand is known and uh, people at least know that hey this particular brand is there existing in the market in this particular space email is a good way to get those customers at a lesser cost more closer to zero after seo right after this, it would be the social channel. If your marketing team really knows how to do social campaigns in the right manner. That's the third channel, which I'll, I'll put it across. But yes, in any of these, let's say if your social team is much better as compared to your SEO team, you will see that, okay, social is the channel which is giving the higher ROI. SEO team is not that great. So then SEO may not give this particular thing, right? So it depends a lot on the team as well. I can't just right. number them one, two, three and uh, say that hey, this will be always the order for all the brands. But yes, it depends a lot on how the experience of the team is, how capable they are and mm. how are they able to drive that particular strategy into implementation. So right. that, that also has a lot of say over there. A lot of technical founders might have the misconception. We, mm -hmm. we were speaking earlier about, you know, companies that have not yet found BMF, right? Uh, there's this presumption then that B2B startups are, pre are predominantly search led. And mm -hmm. there's no way that, you know, before PMF, a B2B startup should invest in an Instagram or a visual medium. Mm -hmm. And nearly all B2C startups uh, would yeah. go with a visual medium. Mm -hmm. Is is that a bit of a misnomer or do you think that sort of holds true largely for people who are non-marketers, let's say? Largely, it will hold true. So what mm -hmm. we are saying here is that, hey, marketers who have uh, B2C products, uh, that they will go for at least uh, visual mediums. And again, in B2C, we are speaking of products like, let's say, art form or something which has visual It could value. even be a t-shirt, it could be yeah. shoes, whatever it could be. So, so they're at least a visual medium at the stage where uh, the product has not yet uh, found the product market fit. That would be mm -hmm. the right. And again, in terms of the other thing uh, which you mentioned, uh, th that would be the right thing. So in both the cases, I would agree with you. Got it. Do you do you think that there is space, you know, before PMF? In some cases, let's say somebody is creating a really experiential B2B product that was mm -hmm. not there in the market. Do you mm -hmm. think there is space at all, at any level for a B2B startup to build discovery, uh, you know, without investing in search. Okay. So in, in such cases, I would also recommend that, okay, let, let's say if uh, this particular person knows that hey, this particular thing is going to help uh, my target customer and in this particular manner, right? The other channel, this part, uh, place is LinkedIn, where at least what they could do is they could connect with those people on LinkedIn, put that case study across or put that example across that, hey, uh, if you use this particular product, it's going to help you with this, this, this things. Uh, I'm open to a demo. Um, give them a booking calendar, which they can book online and uh, take that conversation ahead. If th there is a stage like this, what could be done at least is LinkedIn could be used more effectively, connect with those right people and see if uh, th that works out for you. Earlier, uh, at least a few years back, LinkedIn was the first on the list for many. But to this days, with the lower open rates from the senior management, because right. too many people have jumped on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. This is a little difficult option, but yet worth trying. Got it, got it, got it. And is there for for B2B startups after PMF, uh, yeah. what are uh, the the best three ways? So you have three, uh, you have four, you have organic search. LinkedIn, direct email and uh, direct sales, right? Direct sales. What's the best way? And, and there is only one intern. There's only one intern. Now, is the founder going to do something or founder is going to just... Uh, founder is a tech founder. He is just overwhelmed. He doesn't want to get into marketing business. He is okay. like, m m m right, in this case. Uh, so so let, let's say at least, uh, well, the, the poor intern, I'm, I'm uh, pitting him right now. Uh, yeah. that, uh, the, uh, the manager doesn't want to do anything and uh, yeah. all, all the weight on is on this particular person. What I'll do mm -hmm. is at least first understand what are the capabilities of the intern? What are his okay. interests? 
what is he okay. good at is he good at communication or is he good at analysis right Got because it. this is one intern a fixed person uh, i hope i have do, i don't have that uh, liberty of selecting the intern also in this case when you're making the life so difficult yeah you don't you don't yeah right so at least then understanding the capability of that intern right if he is really good at communication if you feel that okay uh, this guy young but at least he has that particular knack of cracking the conversation and uh, speaking with people speaking to the right audience and converting the deal maybe i'll, I'll just uh, push him only into sales and maybe uh, linkedin communication that's something which i would do but yes the person is let's say good at analysis he understands the data well he knows how to at least uh, optimize a website and take care of it let's say he's also a little bit of techy in that case maybe search engine optimization followed by email right so that's how at least even if uh, there is a single person i would at least do it but yes it depends on what his or her skill set are i cannot just say that okay uh, person x uh, you need to do it in this particular manner uh, that would not be the right thing it would be again uh, as that saying goes that you can't ask say, sachin tendulkar to sing a song or lata mangeshkar to play cricket it would go in a similar manner right so it depends on what the skill set of that intern are acha so kaushal let's let's say we take away the intern for whatever reason we are not able to afford that intern also we have found pmf i am yeah. a i am a micro saas founder mm-hmm. i just found pmf 24 hours ago i yeah. have let's say a thousand dollars in terms of revenue that i have made that i can put back into the business this is a b2b micro saas company right mm-hmm. what are my best bets in terms of investing in growth for my micro saas company as okay. a one man team one man team i would say founder uh, so at least uh, see the respect uh, for founder uh, which the person would be able to find on linkedin would be much more uh, with the fo- founder designation as compared to the other designation he does not want to invest much time so i, I would take direct uh, sales out of the question because you already mentioned that this is a tech founder i believe he is the same founder right yet right same founder same founder so he he doesn't uh, uh, like sales that's what my assumption is uh, neither yeah. i can ask him to do seo or uh, email marketing because that's not something which he would do but at least linkedin uh, with this uh, $1000 uh, or even without this $1000 w- would be a better medium so then what he can do is he can start connecting organically with people on linkedin and uh, demonstrating that hey this particular product is something which can help you solve this 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 challenges maybe try to get an appointment fix a demo meeting and then take that thing further right so th- that's the best way uh, the founder at least even uh, without those $1000 if he has $1000 i would say at least uh, and he wants to invest on some channel at least i'll ask them that okay uh, get your website audited uh, by seo organization and and invest it in that particular space uh, or use some paid marketing channels and uh, try to get some more users either of those channels for uh, the paid side but $1000 is not enough uh, for the long run in terms of seo so i would say at least go for paid initially just because of those $1000 constraint and see how many users come from that $1000 via the paid medium but invest his time and energy at least on linkedin and see if uh, that's able to deliver some results right so this is how i would uh, divide that uh, 1000 rupees and the effort which he can put in to grow his brand what incrementally are there are the same channels better incrementally as well uh, he should he go deeper into one channel or should he go wide be after finding pmf what's generally the best better way so after finding pmf but you're saying 2000 dollars only as of now so right yes. how to get 2000 now so in in 2000 cycle uh, when you look at uh, the today's competition uh, be it pay marketing seo the time which is needed around that or be it email marketing or linkedin uh, each of the channels will have its own uh, requirements in terms of funds with 2000 dollars maybe uh, invest a l- little bit uh, more on email marketing and see if uh, that kind of audience uh, is able to uh, connect with the founder there right uh, that's so what uh, i'm doing is i'm taking some email database uh, definitely you'll not be able to get this kind of database from the Uh, the most trusted brands because even uh, the, their charges would itself be 2000 uh, dollars for the database close to that yeah uh, yeah and and then there would be no f- funds left for sending out the email or uh, paying the even the freelancer to do that kind of email com- campaign or subscribing to those email tools which are also needed but yes uh, at least uh, email marketing could be one route i would yet uh, at 2000 dollars also i'm not suggest that okay he goes with the uh, seo because uh, that's the point where again there is a constraint which is there in the near future uh, it's a short term thing uh, they just want to do a blast 
and see how it works. And in this case, an email blast would be a better option because at least they will be able to reach all their target audience if they find the right database from some source which is cheaper in nature. And I hope uh, at least they find the right tool so that at least their uh, emails are not bouncing or landing up in the spam folder. So at least if those things are taken care of, th that at least channel would give you a better result or return on investment. Right. You were speaking about tools. Uh, what are the first five marketing tools MicroSaaS founders should have? And should they go for these cheap life LTD lifetime deal marketplaces and mm -hmm. have, you know, sort of lifetime deals of copycats of popular tools or they should, you know, sort of buy the more popular tools? What's your way, you know, given the budget constraint? Let's say at least the founder, uh, well, uh, definitely based on the channel, the person will have to find that particular tools. So each of the right. channels has their own tools, right? So I cannot generalize it at a very broad level, but at least hmm. there are a few tools which are generic in nature, specifically Google Analytics. And when it comes to SEO, Google Search Console, right? And even if the right. founder is not investing on SEO, there's not, no harm in seeing how the data or how the organic channel is also behaving for him or her. At least uh, is it seeing some traction even without doing SEO? right just based on the good work uh, which the engineering team has done uh, there is a possibility that okay uh, for some particular kind of keywords or for some particular kind of content the website is ranking organically in nature so i would say google analytics that first uh, whether the person is implementing uh, any other channels or even initiating marketing uh, even before that google analytics should be there uh, so and that's at least uh, for the smaller version, it's free or for the minimum traffic, it's free. So Google Analytics comes first into the tools bracket. The second is Google Search Console. Again, because at least you'll start getting visibility of how your organic channel organic search channel is performing and that's the reason uh, that will get into the second channel for the other channels like let's say your email marketing and uh, the other things th there are multiple channels but most of this will have a little bit of fees because of the nature of the work which has to be done around th that particular thing but there are many tools with the freemium version where at least uh, they allow you to use it in some mode maybe they, they'll just uh, try to give you a smaller version now let's say how screaming frog it does not allow right. you to the entire website when it is the paid version but yeah you can crawl those 500 urls and understand how your how the crawlers are behaving when they're coming onto your website so tools like this which are free could be used in each of the practice sorry from if you speak of seo i'll be able to give you a longer list but for all the other channels it's been some yeah. time since the time when i'm away from uh, this particular channel so i won't be able to uh, give you the exact tool names for all the other channels like email marketing facebook and others there's been an explosion of ai led content on blogs on social media linkedin is full of ai tools and you know this is popular that is popular it's very easy and tantalizing option for a founder to want to use chat gpt to yeah. create a heck load of keyword based seo blogs of course we all know google standing on it which is you know if it is insightful if it is helpful, uh, we'll not penalize you purely because it's created by a uh, AI. But based on your experience, it's it seems like a very low hanging fruit, especially yeah. at this moment where, you know, you might be launching an AI led startup for especially non marketing founders, especially tech founders. It's a very tantalizing option to create 100 blogs with, uh, with AI tools and then put it up. Is that a landmine or is there, you know, a real opportunity there? What's your take? I would term this as a uh, landmine for some and a real opportunity for some. Now, let, let me at least uh, tell you when and what situation it would be the which case would be applicable. Let's say if the person is in a high competitive space on the search and they start creating this kind of content, AI content uh, for, let's say, things like uh, saris, kurtas, kurtis, those kind of things, right? I'm, I'm just taking an example of an e-commerce uh, brand over here. Now, these categories are uh, highly competitive. People are re is generating really good content around this kind of topics. And in this particular space, if that particular person is creating AI content and generating lots and lots of content, which has textual readability, but not the uh, meaning or it's not helpful for the users. In Google's language, it terms it's the, the, that the content should be EEAT, which is the content has experience, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness, right? At right. Least if content has these four things, then Google would rate it and rank it higher. But yes, if the content does not has that EEAT, uh, it may not uh, work well for that particular person. So in case where uh, the person is in this kind of highly competitive space, and if they just can generate the content, 
uh, from AI, which has no EEAT, it's not going to help them much. And uh, that's where I would say that that's a landmine. But consider the other side of the story. Now, the person is in a space where, uh, let's say, if uh, they, they are creating some content around the best coffee in the town. There are not many people who have written about, let's say, in this case, I'm, I'm taking the example of Mumbai to be um, this thing that, okay, where do I get the best coffee in Mumbai? And this is a topic with very less search volume. Not many people are searching for it. Uh, but yes, if AI-led content is created around this kind of topic, which is not that competitive, but has little number of people searching for it. And in those kind of cases, there is a possibility. If there is no competition content, which is really uh, great. In such cases, there is a possibility that this website would be able to rank better with this kind of content and the AI content would also work. Even before taking the decision whether to do AI content or not to do AI content, there is a need to do a competitor analysis, understand how the market is, and then based on that strategize that, hey, what approach has to be taken? So while it's very, uh, people just feel that, okay, I should, I can generate lots and lots of content just with AI. Why should I even try to do anything else? Uh, jump into it, but sometimes it's not safe. So at least uh, understand that whenever you're generating the content, is it bringing that EEAT value, which I just spoke of, right? Uh, right. The content has that experience as if it's a real person who has written that particular thing, not just picking up small bits on pieces of content from all the competitor websites and just putting it into one article and summarizing the things. Uh, that's not would be uh, which would be counted as an EEAT content. So that, that the expert and the experience should come first. Authority and trustworthiness also, if it can be done, nothing like it. But yes, if all the four things are there, it would create wonders even if the content is AI. So if the content doesn't read like a robot wrote it, it is pretty much safe in Google's eyes. Is that a good way of putting it? No, but uh, the content should have uh, the helpfulness also, right? Yeah, yeah. it should right. be of value. So if it is of value and does not read like a robot wrote it, then that's the best Both way to things, Yes, uh, come into it. Even if it sounds like a robot, but it is useful content, helpful mm -hmm. content, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. demonstrates that ability of EEAT, that's fine. People use tools like, let's say, undetectable AI and try to make the AI content into a human content. But even after that, if the content is not something which is uh, going to bring real helpfulness or not going to help that end user, what's going to happen? In that case, Google is not going to rank that content well if the competition space is highly competitive. Got it, got it, got it. You spoke about CRO, uh, right? Which is uh, for, the, for those who might, uh, who, who might not be available is conversion uh, rate optimization. So CRO marketing, again, for techies who might be listening in, is basically a method of increasing the percentage of your website's visitors who take a very sort of desired action. That could be, you know, pressing on the sign up button, that can be booking a demo, that can be uh, uh, booking a demo primarily for B2B startups, or it could be something else, filling a form, let's say, again, right? Or making a purchase if, if you are an e-commerce store, right? Yes. So uh, when... Uh, does the role of CRO become important? Uh, okay. And and when is it that, uh, again, in the context of limited resources and limited uh, mm -hmm. uh, features and limited time, when when should a founder start looking at CRO? So if he can, has the time at least, if not the funds, even if he has the time, I would say day one again. The CRO is fundamental in nature, right? This is uh, somewhere, even without using the word CRO, many people automatically do the CRO aspect. Uh, sometimes by looking at their competitor website and placing the button at the right place where the user has higher probability of clicking or just by the general knowledge of their own browsing behavior. Many people implement CROs subconsciously and uh, they do it over a period. Now, the only thing uh, and only time when CRO is has to be become more uh, specific or more intelligent, I would say, or more detailed is the time when the top of the funnel is bringing you enough visitors, but you're not seeing those visitors who are coming in on the top of the funnel, moving to the bottom of the funnel. So somewhere we know that, hey, there are some roadblocks or some there are some bottlenecks in between in this particular funnel. Now that's the right time to understand or implement the details of CRO practice, maybe use some free tools like Microsoft Clarity, or uh, maybe some paid tools like Mouseflow, etc and understand how the user is navigating through this particular journey. Once you start understanding the user journey, you are not 
taking decisions just based on your own personal uh, behavior. You are taking that particular decisions based on the insights which you have gathered via the study which has been done on those tools or at least the information which you are getting from those tools. You are looking at the browsing behavior of so many thousands of people and understanding what went well for them, what did not went well for them. Try to capitalize on the things which are going well on many pages and where the things are not going well, try to replace it with something else so that at least you start seeing positive changes in your metrics. So th that would be the right way to implement CRO and at that particular stage where the bottlenecks are found from the top of the funnel to the bottom of the funnel. Top of the funnel itself is not that great, right? right? You're not getting enough traffic and then you're investing time and energy all at the CRO level. That would not be the right time to do CRO, I would say, right? Whatever Got that it. thing is done, that's good enough at least to start with. Got it. Got it. Got it. Now let's try and end this by tying it all together. Mm -hmm. And let's sort of bring it back to the intern, the poor intern we were speaking about through the podcast, mm -hmm. right? Let's say me as a founder, I'm deciding to make my first marketing hire. What should I be looking for in my first ever marketing hire? Let's say I'm a tech founder. I'm a one man team. I have found PMF. I'm able to generate a couple of thousand dollars every single month. This is a micro SaaS tool. What should I be looking for in my first marketing? Should I be going for somebody who is a CMO-ish figure? Should I go for somebody who is a specific domain expert? And if if so, then which domain should I sort of double click on? How Should I go for a jack of all trades or a master of one? Okay. in my first marketing hire. But, but I, I thought we were speaking of intern and you're bringing the CMO also into the picture. So if you have... Let, the let's, say, let's say it's the first marketing hire. CMO is just a fancy title. You might be you know, able to give this person to try and convince him to come on board at a, at a okay. cheaper CTC, at a lower CTC. So he's, he's not getting a CMO salary. Don't worry. Okay. Right. So okay. let's just say we, we just have found somebody who, who has the caliber and we want to hire that person. What okay. should I be looking for in that person in terms of skill set? And uh, when you're saying this, uh, OK, at least while I, I don't want to put a, a salary number to this, but at least uh, do you think that salary would help you uh, get somebody with one year of experience, two year of experience or little more? I'd or say and, and definitely. So let's say again, let's speak about the CTC as well, because we're speaking about Indian founders. Right. Okay. So let's say the budget I have is eight to 10 LPA and I can push it to 15 LPA. That is the max I can sort of push it to because I'm making able to make a couple of thousand dollars every single month. But this person is going to be handling growth and marketing through and through for me. everything. So Saikat, in this particular case, when uh, you are in that particular situation where uh, your product at least has found the product market fit, right? And that's right. why you're ready to invest 15 lakhs uh, in that particular person. Now understand uh, the first thing which we were looking at, which channel is the best performing channel for you? At least, at least I hope you understood by now that, okay, uh, based on your product itself, you will have to understand that which is my favorite, which is the favorite channel for this users. If you do not right. know yourself, right, what I would recommend is understand that, hey, who are your five, top five competitors? Uh, use tools like SEM Rush and understand which are the channels from where they are gaining the visits. So let's say if you identify that, okay, uh, these are my top five competitors and these are the major sources of visits on this particular websites, after analyzing five websites and understanding what are the top five sources of traffic on those particular websites, you'll be able to generalize that, hey, for my product also, this particular channel is going to perform better as compared to other channels, just based True. on your competitors, right? True. Now you have the insight that, hey, which channel is the best channel? Now I would say that invest this 15 lakhs on that particular channel, which is going to give you the best returns or is already giving your customers the best returns. And based on that, you will have to plan that, hey, what should be the JD of this particular person? Because even at 15 lakhs, I, I would prefer to get that one person who is the master of that one particular trait as compared to hiring somebody who's good at everything, uh, but at the same time will not be able to um, help you in solving all the channels together. If you find some person who's an expert at all those things or multiple things and he can step in at 15 lakhs, nothing like it. But usually, even at this particular pricing today in the Indian market, at least I can speak about the metros, you will find people who are experts and willing to do the work uh, single handedly because that's the other channel, the challenge over here. Uh, 
uh, you'll find somebody who's able to handle one channel properly. And I would yet prefer that handle one channel properly and crack that ch particular channel. Help me get above the competition for that particular channel at the limited budgets that I have as compared to investing in somebody who's just a generalist. Got it. And Kaushal, is there a case to hire an agency at this point when we are speaking about experts? Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, expert in one domain, one might be pressed to find, let's say, an email marketing expert or for that matter, an SEO expert, mm -hmm. right? In the in the same uh, sense. So does it, so let's say SEO is perfing, performing the best. Is that the time for me to come to an InfraDigit? So SEO is performing the best. And uh, if it's performing best, why do you want to come to InfraDigit? <laughs> let's just say it, uh, SEO is performing well enough for me to want to invest more into SEO. Let's, okay. let's, Fair. yeah. If yeah. you are at that particular stage, uh, definitely what I would do is, uh, and uh, specifically what happens is because you mentioned in turn or one person with 15 lakh salary, that's where I said yeah. that okay, I'll go for this approach. But let's say right. now you have 15 lakh rupees, which is there, and um, you're not getting the right expert, be it SEO or uh, email marketing or Facebook or anything. What I right. would say, Saika, in this particular case, as a single technical founder, what you could do is instead of investing 15 lakh on that one single person, keep maybe around three, four lakhs for a particular person who can help you handle the agency well. Invest the remaining part of the money in the agency because it's again like renting or buying a property. Right. You're at that stage, even with that one person. Uh, so better to at least find somebody who's able to get or communicate at least to multiple stakeholders do the groundwork and uh, I'm not saying about somebody who's very expensive, somebody who's junior, at least who can delegate, uh, understand the work from you and get the things delivered to, to that agency and at least get the results back and explain it to you. So something like that could be done. If you don't need that and you can step in and do that kind of work itself by yourself, directly go for the agency and give that 15 lakhs to the agency. Because as compared to that one single individual, I don't know how long he or she would stay with this particular founder. It's better that at least an agency steps in and at least is able to help you with that particular work over a much longer period, right? Because when it comes to marketing, that particular history of information also has great value, which sometimes people underestimate that, hey, what's the value of that information created over the years? When a person changes job, uh, you're losing a tremendous amount of information, which does not get captured many a times in those uh, um, KT documents, right? Uh, KD transition documents, uh, at least whatever I have seen, uh, um, I have not seen some document which can take the entire knowledge of that particular person, whatever he has done over this last one or two years and capturing in that one document. But uh, that's where I would recommend an agency before hiring one single individual for an organization. As a non-marketer, as somebody who does not understand anything about marketing, as the only capability I have is a technical skill set, what should I be looking for in the agency? Like you do a Google search and you know 10 agencies come up. Uh, what should I be looking for in the first agency I hire? Okay, fair. So first, at least you identify the channel which you want to work right. on. Right. Right. Now, interestingly, what you have is a budget of 15 lakhs. Right. right? What you could do is... Uh, with person, you had that one option only that, okay, one person would be good at only one thing. You can't expect that the person is good at SEO as well as, uh, let's say, email marketing. But this would be in most of the cases. There would be some gentlemen uh, or just some gentle, uh, uh, some women uh, who would at least uh, master those two skills. But these are rare skills. Uh, these are rare people that find somebody like that. But what you could do is then split the budget, maybe in a particular ratio, whatever uh, feels good for you. Uh, split it into two agencies and then you're doing SEO plus let's say email marketing, right? So the, then you're splitting that amount into two agencies. Now your next question is that, hey, how do I identify the right agency? Uh, so if I was in the situation of this particular founder, what I would do, Saikat, is first understanding the case studies which this particular brand has been able to deliver. What is the kind of growth which this particular agency has been able to deliver? I'll keep that as the first criteria, right? Has they demonstrated, have they demonstrated what they are saying because saying is very easy these days but demonstrating that growth is what a founder should be looking for even if that organization comes at a little higher cost if they've demonstrated something i would give more weightage to that particular thing uh, that particular agency as compared to the agency which is ready to work at let's say one tenth the cost or even one fifth or half of the cost but does not has that requisite case studies or testimonials to back themselves right so the first thing should be kept as the case studies 
second the testimonials and and then followed by the other factors like pricing and other stuff lovely lovely i think that is probably the most informative uh interview uh that we have ever had in season 3 of the show so i really really appreciate you taking time out for this one kaushal um sure. i really appreciated your time um and uh, i i think a lot of aspiring founders and early stage founders took with them uh, lots of nuggets of wisdom on sure. marketing and growth from this conversation thank you so much for this one so much saikat it was a pleasure speaking with you and thanks for having me on the show lovely guys thank please you. do tune in next week for the next episode of the thrifty titans podcast see ya thank you.